come. The day is coming soon for each and every one of you. So we come out here because hell is real. We come out here because hell is horrible. We come out here because there's no warning that is too severe. There is nobody in hell who is going to be complaining that guys came out with a banner and a sign and a microphone telling them to repent. Nobody in hell is right now complaining about people who were too, too bold in their witness, who preach too hard a message. No, the people in hell are crying out, why didn't someone tell me? Why didn't more people, why didn't someone shake me? Why didn't someone have a bigger sign? Why didn't someone have a louder microphone? If you knew that hell was real, do we have any Christians out here? Do we have any born-again Christians out here? In the sound of my voice, any born-again Christians? Couple, one, two. I'm telling you, here's, all right, amen. Here's a message first for the Christians. This is a lost and dying world. We need to grab every sinner that we can and tell them about the goodness and the severity of God. That God is loving and kind and merciful and patient, and that's the goodness of him. But he's also a just judge. He's not messing around. The Bible says that our God is known by the judgment that he executes. Do you think the people in Sodom and Gomorrah were laughing as the, as the fire and brimstone were raining down on them? No, not a one of them was laughing. Their little homo party was ended real fast in the, by the fire and brimstone. And you think the people that were scratching and clawing and pounding on the outside of Noah's Ark thought it was hilarious? Do you think their little party continued? No. God rained out their little party. God rained out their little party in the days of Noah. And that is just a tiny touch. A tiny touch of God's wrath in the, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed in fire and brimstone, and that is a cigarette lighter full of God's wrath. And the entire globe was flooded in the days of Noah, and only eight people were saved. And that's about an eye drop full of God's wrath. But there's coming a day when God is going to pour out his cup of wrath, full strength, without mixture. And we've never seen it. We have never seen even just an eye drop full of God's wrath. The, the the flood of Noah that destroyed this entire globe is nothing compared to what the full wrath of God is going to be like on Judgment Day. And the only, the only reason I can possibly imagine for why God has not already poured out his cup of wrath onto this wicked and perverse world is that God and God alone knows how severe his wrath is going to be. Only God knows how severe and how permanent and how painful and how awful his wrath is actually going to be. And he's being merciful. He's being merciful and kind, loving and long-suffering. The Bible says God is not slack considering his promises, but he's being merciful, long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is why God is being so long-suffering and so merciful to this wicked and nasty world, because only God knows how severe his wrath is going to be. The Bible says that when Jesus returns, he's coming back with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Can we get some of these? Uh, maybe later, maybe later. No, not right now, not right now. Can I have a note so, No, you may not, no, you may not. 10 bucks. Maybe later, maybe later. Maybe later. Maybe later. Uh, I'm still in the middle of a good Bible spanking here. Let's not interrupt the Bible spanking, please. This nation needs a Bible spanking. No, this nation needs a good Bible spanking. We can tell you the full counsel of God, the goodness and the severity of God. And that's the problem. Where's the brokenness? Where's the brokenness over your sin? Where is the brokenness over your sin? That's what this city needs. This city needs brokenness. This city needs humility. All right, one question for the, for the lady in the front. Do you like Hondas? Let me just tell you, folks, I am under no obligation to open up a question and answer session. If I answer any of your questions, it's only because I'm being kind to you. I'm here to preach and to give you a Bible spanking. But as because I'm a kind man, I will answer your question. Will you give me a button? I'm not going to be rude at all. All right. 
you're, you're telling us how your beliefs and what you believe. Would you like us to push our beliefs on you? Okay, her comment, money, money, her comment is, please. I'm here yeah. pushing my yeah. belief and telling you what I believe, and would I want her to push her belief on me? This is America. We have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. But let me warn you something. What's your worldview so I know what your belief is? Yeah, what's your... You're a Christian? Okay, why would you have a problem with this? This is what we're commanded to do. I just believe that, you know, everyone sins, and if you sin, God forgives. Uh, you need to stop sinning. Jesus told the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. He wasn't saying that wink, wink, nudge, nudge. He wasn't saying go and sin less. He said go and sin no more. That's what he said, go and sin no more. That's our requirement. Now, if we sin, not when, not when, not that we have to, not that it's inevitable, not that it's into our flesh. If we sin, which is a transgression of the law, sin is willful rebellion against a holy and righteous God when we know what we're doing is against his law, but we do it anyway because of the temporary pleasure that it gives us. And if we do that, the only way to be right with God at that point, 1 John, 1 John 3, 7, uh, is, says, uh, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that's what we must do. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin, cleanse us from that unrighteousness. But if you go out and sin again, you better immediately c c confess it as sin, lay it at the foot of the cross, and turn from it. But if you die, that's right, you better not sin. Uh, you better not die. You better, you better make sure when you get in your car tonight that you have repented of all of your sins because if some teenagers texting and smashes into you and takes your life you're going to end up you're going to wake up in hell with sin on your life if you uh if you are a wicked sinner thinking oh god doesn't care it's just little stuff and some drunk driver takes your life this very night you're going to wake up in hell and you'll have nobody to blame but yourself if getting his dick stuck, it's okay Nobody's perfect, but I believe what you're saying, but nobody's perfect and understand that everyone is different. All right, you said nobody's perfect. Jesus everyone said... deserves a chance. Yes, okay. uh, that's why I'm out here. Everyone deserves a chance. That's why we're out here. But Matthew 5, 48, I believe Jesus said, Be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. We can do all things through Christ. If you're a Christian, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And his commands are not burdensome. This is what Jesus Christ commands. He even says, he even says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I command? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I command? These are Jesus' own words. Jesus said, if any man will be my disciple, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. These are the commands of God. These are everything. And a big sin, a lot of people, they say they're Christians or whatever, but they come and stop the preaching of the gospel. They're not preaching anything that is not in the Bible. Hey, the truth is hate to those that hate the truth. Hate the truth, so yes, it's supposed to sound like hate. Oh, it's hate. They thought Jesus was hate, but when he said, you hypocrites, you Vipers. Jesus called them hypocrites. They thought it was hateful when he drove the money changers out of his temple. They thought he was so hateful that they crucified him on a cross. I'm not even as bad as Jesus because nobody's crucified me yet. And apparently I'm a little more loving than that. But you know what? They hated Jesus, and that's why they hate us. The Bible says, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. And there's a lot of friends of the world here, that's so you're an enemy of God. You can't have the world, you can't have your sins, and have Jesus too. It's one or the other. It's either Jesus or 100%, or it's nothing, or it's hell. You got hell to pay. That's the bottom line. Hell's real, folks. You see, a lot of people they just don't, can't grasp eternity. Eternity is real, hell is real. And when you get there, it lasts forever. Eternity is forever and forever and forever and forever. You see, folks, you're, you're going to have eternal life one way or another. It'll be eternal life in hell forever, in torment, or eternal life with Jesus Christ. But if you, if you continue to be stubborn, and you don't repent of your sins, and you don't trust in Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. That's the bottom line. That's the way Jesus preaches it. That's the way we preach it. And that's the truth. You believe it how you want to believe it. Nobody can force you to believe anything. Jesus will not himself force you to believe anything. But one day he will, your knee will bow before him. Whether right now or in the afterlife, your knee will bow before God. And you'll confess that he's God. Yeah, I know. It's not fair. And you see, folks, all right. 
Alright, let's go with some different sins here. What's uh somebody name a sin that they commit? This got interesting. Anybody name a sin? Uh, that they're proud the of. Don't have fun to wicker hand. Oh, we got a joker. Make sure you ain't lift them out here. Make sure your hand doesn't go up right now. Alright. Don't miss them. Any jokers, man? Show your hands. Hey, hey, Any jokers in the crowd? Hey, Any jokers? Hey, hey, Fornicator. Alright, we got one on us, alright? Fornicator. Alright, yeah, we got two. I've already been twice. That's all called. Homosexual. Liar. You're homosexual? Alright, you need to repent, young man. You need to turn from that sin. There's all kinds of sin. Look at the Bible. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. You see, folks? People like this half talented man with the guitar will try to silence the gospel, but you can't silence the Holy Spirit. You can't silence that little voice yeah. in the back of your head he, telling he you said, that your life is right. You can't silence that voice. That voice is there, but you can quench the Holy Spirit. You can push him off and say, No, God, I got this figured out. I'll do it myself. You see, you can't. You can silence us. You can kill us. You can get rid of us. But you'll never get rid of the message you heard tonight. Nobody here is without excuse. You're in the Bible Belt of America. There's 5,000 churches probably in Charlotte, the Charlotte area. So there's no excuse. You've all heard the gospel. You've heard the love you know, Jesus loves you gospel. Now you're getting the hellfire and brimstone. Because apparently the love you know, gospel has not worked on any of you. Some of you may, some of you might be Christians, but the majority are not. Because broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many may be in private. Question. Yeah. Tattoos are sinful, I believe, yes. Just don't mark your flesh. But see, the thing is, my glorified body, when I'm resurrected, won't have tattoos. You see, I wasn't always saved. Believe it or not, I wasn't always saved. I was actually a sinner at one time. And I got tattoos and stuff. I did a lot of things. I have sinned. I had the ability to sin, but I purposed in my heart to go and sin no more, like Jesus said. So I'm not going to sin anymore. I have the ability. And if I do sin, I have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. But sin should be the exception, not the rule. You see, most of you, sin rules your life. Whatever little fleshly pleasure you have, that's what you give in to. Oh, I'm swapping bugs here. <laughs> all right. Now, if we can all behave ourselves, I will take one question. One question from the crowd. Any what do you think about that Westboro Baptist Church? I think Westboro, he said, what do I think about Westboro Baptists? I think Westboro Baptists are a bunch of lost sinners. They need to repent and they need to trust Jesus Christ. I don't even saved. think they exist anymore. Any it's like questions? people, that's all people ever, that's questions? all they ever think. Everybody with a sign or a banner or whatever. So it's like they preach like five times. And that's all anybody, I don't even think they, I don't even think that church exists anymore. How does that equate? Six, he says, 60 years of sin for an eternity of hell. Well, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life. I mean, you don't have to do 20 years of sin. The thing is, without Jesus Christ, without His sacrifice, without accepting Him as your Savior, and turning from your sin, you're going to hell. It doesn't matter how many lit, uh, years you live. Once you hit the age of accountability where you know right from wrong, you're old enough to know better, then you're accountable for that. You're accountable for what you know, what you've been taught. What age is that? It's different. I believe some of you know mentally handicapped people that might be 40, they're not going to be held accountable for some of the sins they've done because they don't know any better. So, I mean, it's a person by person basis. But I can guarantee all of you, besides the child right there, are at the age of accountability. You know better. You know what your sin is wrong. Go ahead. Hey, my mom's ice cream bar. What I do I'm not touching that one. I don't, Tell me, got to be theological questions and yes. at least of a high school level education. There need to be theological questions about the Bible, God, or anything at a high school level. There can't be little children questions. <laughs> By Jesus' yeah. own words, we know. And hold on to that, because. Oh, oh yeah. Crazy. By Jesus' own words, we know that there are people in hell who are crying out that someone would go and warn their family and friends and co-workers not to go to that awful place. So we come out here on behalf of maybe a personal friend or a family member that you know who is in hell right now who can't
not themselves come and warn you. We come out here to tell you, to plead with you on Christ's behalf, not to go to that horrible place. But if you end up dying in your sin, you have no excuse. The Bible is very clear. And God will not shed a tear for you on that day. God will not shed a tear for you on that day when the angels bind you hand and foot and cast you from his presence into a lake of fire. Your life, your eternity is going to glorify God in one way or another. Each and every person out here, for all of eternity, you are going to glorify God in one way or another. Either you will be saved, you will turn from your sin and be saved, and that will glorify God because it's His pleasure and His, and, uh, his uh, desire to shower you with grace and give you mercy and bring you into his kingdom. So if you will repent of your sins and trust in Christ and live a holy life, then you will glorify God because he was merciful and kind to you. But if you die as an unrepentant sinner, I'm telling you, if you die as an unrepentant sinner, your life for all of eternity will still glorify God, but it's not because of his grace and mercy, it is because of his holiness and his righteousness and his judgment and his wrath. Our God is known by the judgment that he executes. And that is that will glorify God. Your, your life will glorify God for all of eternity, whether you receive him and you spend eternity in heaven, or his judgment and his holiness is proved by those. Do you understand that the Bible says in the book of Revelation that we, the saints, the saints, the saved ones of the world, are going to rejoice as the wicked are cast into God's presence. Do you understand that? This is a hard truth. This is a hard truth of the Bible. But it's in Isaiah, it's in Daniel, it's in uh, Psalms, and it's in Revelation. That we, the saints, the saved ones of the world, are going to rejoice as the wicked are cast from God's presence into everlasting fire. Now that breaks my heart right now because I don't want to do that. In that line, now certainly in that line will be Saddam Hussein and Hitler and all these wicked people. And that's easy to see that we'll rejoice, that we'll rejoice when they go to hell. But in that same line, in that same line of judgment, are going to be family members of mine, friends of mine, co-workers of mine. They will be in that same line. And the Bible says, I am going to rejoice. The saints will rejoice as the wicked are cast into hell. That breaks my heart now because I don't want to rejoice as any of my family members or friends are cast into a lake of fire. But it will be at that time that we fully understand God's holiness and God's righteousness and God's just judgment. And it will be revealed and perfect against those people for all of eternity. And the Bible says that the smoke of your torment will ascend it up forever. To understand that the smoke of your torment will ascend up forever forever and we've come out here and everyone that you, you know that has shared their faith with you that has shared their faith with you for all of their life has begged you and implored you and God has put people in your path God has put people in your path time after time after time after time after time after time and you still reject him do you think God is going to shed a tear over you when he casts you into hell what does God say? He says, I called out to you, but you refused. I stretched out my hand, but no one regarded. You had disdain for all of my counsel and had none of my rebuke. What does God say to the unrepentant sinner? He'll say, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, then what's going to happen? God says, then I, then you will call upon me, but I will not answer. You will seek me, but shall not find me. For you hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Folks, God's not messing around. Our God is known by the judgment that he executes. And uh, the wrath of God will be upon all nations that forget about God. All right, so uh, in, uh, in my kindness, even though I think you still need a good Bible spanking, I will open it up uh, to uh, theological questions. If you have a good theological question that's worthy of at least a high school educated mind, then I will take it. All right, serious question. 
Okay, hold on. Wait, Where Adam and Eve married? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Jesus said, do not know that from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female, and for this cause a man shall leave his mother and father, and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. So that's a good verse of Jesus himself uh, against same-sex marriage, against homosexuality, and uh, yeah, I don't think they had any formal ceremony. There wasn't anybody there to have a ceremony with other than God himself. But uh, I bet God put on a pretty good uh, ceremony for them. Yes. So are you judging? Am I judging is her question. Yes. Uh, so far, so far, you have been very easy to judge. So far, this crowd has been very easy to judge. Jesus himself said in John 7, 24, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. So if someone is proud of their uh, uh, drunkenness, I can judge them and say, listen, the Bible says that drunkards cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This man right here actually cares more about masturbation than his own soul. He, he gladly announced, he gladly told me that masturbation is more important to him than his eternal soul. So I can let him know, I can let him know that, uh, that someone who is looking with lust, looking with lust is adultery and he's on his way to hell. So the Bible says that a spiritual man judges all things, but he himself is rightly judged of no man. So yes, we're judging. It's what Christians are commanded to do. So you don't sin yourself? What? You don't sin yourself? What? Say it again. I couldn't hear. You don't sin yourself? Never sin. Isn't God supposed to be the only one that is supposed to judge you? Exactly. Her question is, isn't... Her question is, isn't God... When it starts with the word isn't, that's a question. Her question was, isn't God the only one who's allowed to judge? No. God is the only one who can condemn. God is the only one. God is the only one who can condemn. But a Christian is commanded to judge. I've already given you the verses. When you judge, judge with righteous judgment. And a spiritual man judges all things. And even in Matthew, hold on, even in Matthew 7, 1 through 5, it doesn't say you can't judge at all. It says you can't judge hypocritically or by appearance only. We have removed the laws from our eyes. We have removed the laws from our own eyes so that we can see clearly to take the speck out of our brother's eye. What's that? What about strippers? What about what? What about strippers? What about strippers? All right, her question, her question is, what about strippers? Well, gee, the Bible said, Jesus said, that if you cause one of his little ones to stumble, then it'd be better than a millstone be tied around your neck and you'd be cast into the depths of the sea. So if you are causing men to lust, if you are causing men to lust, actually Jesus says it would be better that someone tie a huge boulder around your neck and cast you out into the ocean. So you need to find another job. You need to find another job other than stripping. All right, now, I'm about my father's business. I'm about my father's business. All right. All right. The masturbator has a question. Yes. Silence. Question from the masturbator. Uh, I have tried to disgrace. I, have, I used to be a very wicked sinner. I used to. I was a liar, a thief, a fornicator, a drunkard. I used to be a wicked sinner. But the difference is I responded properly to the call of Christ. When I was 20, I properly responded to the call of Christ. And that is what each and every person must do. The, the message of the gospel has been laid before you this day and it's been laid before you thousands of times. Your requirement is to respond properly. And when Jesus says that if you look with lust, it's the same as committing adultery, you can you could, uh, you could use two different magic markers on that verse. You could use a black one and cover it over because you don't like it. Or you could use a yellow highlighter and highlight it and say, I really need to work on that one. So praise God through the power of Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I haven't looked at porn in years. I have a good godly wife. And I have holy sex. In Psalms cannot inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 6, 9, 10. Some of you weren't here for the little quiz. I'm going to read through.
in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. And as I call out a sin that you are currently guilty of and have not repented of, please raise your hand. Paul says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither idolater. Do we have any idolaters out there? An idolater is someone, an idolater is someone who spends more of their time, money, and passion on things like entertainment, booze, sports, music, concerts than they do the cause of Christ. Okay, we got two or three idolaters. Neither idolaters nor adulterers. Do we have any adulterers out there in the crowd? Now Jesus said that if you look with lust, you uh, it's, it's the same as committing adultery in your heart. Do we have anybody out here that's looking with lust at the immodest girls out here at porn? Okay, more hands going up. So neither idolaters, nor adulterers, nor fornicators. Do we have any fornicators out here in the crowd? Now, what does that mean? Uh, for, all those, for all of you who had a public education, went to public school, fornication is having sex outside of marriage. Do we have any uh, why are you a masturbator if you're also a fornicator? Are you better than your girlfriend? I mean, even from a secular standpoint, I think that's wrong. What's that? I think you have a lousy partner if you're, if you're pleasuring yourself. Alright, so neither idolaters, nor adulterers, nor fornicators, nor homosexual offenders. Do we have any homosexual offenders out there in the crowd? Uh, I think you're I think you're all right, thank God, praise God. Could finally ask that question and no hands went up. Great. That's why we like NASCAR events. We just have to mostly deal with drunks and immodestly dressed women and not have to deal as much with the homosexuals. So neither idolater, nor adulterer, nor fornicator, nor homosexual offender, nor drunkard. Do we have any drunkards out there in the crowd? This is not a list that you want to be getting 100% on, sir. This is a list that you need to be off of. Neither slanderer nor swindler. Folks, if your hand went up even once for any of these things, you're in trouble with God. So, we warn you, we don't have much time. You don't have the blessing of us four men out here for much longer. God, in His wisdom and mercy, brought us out to give you words of wisdom from the Bible. Because we have too many, hold on, we have too many people with Bibles in their house collecting dust. Watch some of these videos on YouTube where these tribes, these tribes in these far off lands, they get a shipment of the first Bibles ever in their language. And there's a party and there's crying and weeping and, and people are just broken and so excited. And you guys have Bibles collecting dust and being ignored. We're telling you that God told the prophet Ezekiel when the nation of Israel had turned from him, turned from God and became wicked and was going after false gods, God told the prophet Ezekiel, when I say unto the wicked that thou shalt surely die, and you, prophet Ezekiel, give us them not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his way to save his life, then that wicked man shall surely die for his sins, and his blood will not be required. But his blood, uh, he said, that sinner shall surely die for his sins, but his blood I will require at your hands. God told the prophet Ezekiel that if he did not warn those people, whether those stubborn and stiff-necked people listened or whether they refused, his job was not to save them, his job was to warn them. And if he warned them, their blood would not be upon our hands. Your blood on that day will not be upon our hands. There's coming a day when Jesus returns, Jesus returns, and it is going to be a bloody mess. The, the Bible says that the blood in the battle of Armageddon, the blood from Jesus is battling his enemies, will go up to the bridles, up to the stirrups and the bridles of the horses. There will be, it will be feet deep in blood. The entire valley will be filled with the blood of his enemies. I'm out here because I don't want that to be your blood. Blood will be required for your sin. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. When you sin, someone's blood is going to be required. Now it's too late. It is too late in history for the blood of rams and bulls and sheep to do anything for you. So the 
there's only two, two bloods that will be uh, accounted for on that day. Your sin demands the shedding of blood. Now it will either be your blood, which I don't want and God doesn't want, or it will be the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ has already been spilled. It's already been shed for you and for your sins. Receive that shed blood of Jesus Christ so you will not, so you will not have your blood on that day rising up to the saddles of the horses.